This video is about Dwight Eisenhower, President of the United States after the Second World War, and his building of the current interstate highway system so many use today. Hello, this is I Go Travel with Don Barnett. This is the second video that uh, uh, we've uh, made on Eisenhower here in Abilene, Kansas, his hometown. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the interstate system that we enjoy so much. So uh, come along. Let's take a look at this interstate. We parked our RV in front of the uh, Eisenhower uh, home, uh, toured the house, and uh, walked around the grounds. When World War II was over, the American voters rewarded uh, their top general with the presidency. I like Ike. I like Ike was the slogan that carried Eisenhower to victory for two terms of office. He was not a flamboyant personality, but he ran the presidency with efficiency and fairness, and the public liked his uh, fatherly or grandfatherly image and demeanor. After the war, Eisenhower built the American interstate highway system. Back home on the domestic front, he was impressed with the uh, German uh, Autobahn, the efficient uh, highway system in Germany, and uh, then devised the American Interstate Network. It is a consistent and beautiful set of highways from one end of the country to another. At least four lanes across country and through cities. Eisenhower was a guy who understood and appreciated infrastructure and uh, his idea to bomb uh, uh, the German infrastructure in France during the Second World War carried over after the war and he recognized the importance of getting a transportation system uh, across the United States and he devised, his administration devised the interstate system in the U.S. that is just a terrific transportation system. You can go from one end of the country to the other and not hit a single red light. You bypass all of the towns. Each highway in the interstate system is numbered and each mile has a mileage marker on it. The mileage markers uh, run uh, state by state starting uh, at mile zero on the western side of the state and to the higher, highest number on the east side. And the same for the interstate highways that run north-south. The markers start at zero on the south part of each state and runs up to uh, the north end of the state at the higher numbers. Here's some of the interstates uh, that I've traveled on. The interstate system uh, crisscrosses the country. Across mountains, uh, plains, it's a very well signed, consistent signage. You can speed right along uninterrupted. And those semis couldn't operate without it. The interstate to get you off these kinds of roads. Uh, although the interstates can run into uh, weather conditions as well. The interstate means that uh, no more dragging behind big trucks. They, got, they uh, have a lot of power anyhow. But the four lane is uh, ideal for everybody. Sometimes the lanes uh, going the other way are separated by uh, trees uh, or a mountain, uh, but by and large, uh, the four lanes are side by side. But it does give you time, that four lane, to uh, enjoy the scenery on the side like this. I keep, uh, I can't help but keep saying it is a great transportation system. Hitchhiking is not allowed on the interstates and they have minimum speeds as well. 
This is an overpass for animals to get across the highway. And we're coming into, uh, it looks like, double tunnels. Each lane going both ways. Again, the tunnels are well lit up and uh, you can just roll right on through them. And no bikes allowed on the interstate. We are coming into the Eisenhower Tunnel west of Denver. There's the sign there and we're coming into it. It's a long tunnel and really cuts a big hill out of the highway. It's well lit up as you can see, uh, but not a whole lot of room for uh, parking on the side. So you really don't want to break down in the middle of this tunnel or any tunnel on the highway for that matter. But that seldom happens and uh, there are very few, if any, accidents in these tunnels. Everybody drives accordingly and you roll right on through. We'll just keep the camera on here uh, until we get through the tunnel. And just to give you an idea of, uh, of how long this tunnel is, it takes, uh, you know, a few minutes to get through it. But you hardly have to uh, slow down your speed. We're looking at a little piece of daylight in the distance there. And by the way, if you're going through a city, my advice is stay on that interstate. Don't take a side road where you think there might be less traffic. Get in that right-hand lane or the second lane to the right so you don't get uh, on the right lane where you have to force to exit. But just uh, stay on the highway and slow up your speed a little bit and uh, you'll roll right through these big cities. And through some of the high hills and the mountains like in this Eisenhower tunnel here. Like I say, cars have to hardly lessen their speed, and not, not too much. Uh, and uh, we're into the daylight and rolling again. The trucks love these highways. Another important feature of the interstate highways uh, are the available rest stops that are frequently and consistently along the routes. They are available and free for all traffic, cars and trucks. Some have uh, welcome to the state tourist information services. Uh, others are uh, pullouts only, but nearly all have washrooms, or as they say down in the States here, restrooms. Usually uh, there are a few picnic areas, uh, tables, uh, uh, an area to walk your dog uh, also. Uh, and uh, overnight stopping or resting is okay, but the idea is not to provide travelers with free camping spots for several days or weeks or so. Uh, a few rest areas have been abused with long-term overnighters as the economy tightens. But by and large, the rest stops are used very effectively. If you are overnighting and moving on the next morning, like the truckers do, uh, it is ideal for the traveling RVer. I believe there is safety in numbers. If there's no one at a truck stop or at a, a, a pullout, a rest stop, uh, I will not pull in. But uh, there's my rig on the left there, and uh, sometimes we just... Uh, uh, sometimes these uh, rest stops uh, can get crowded, but if uh, you are a sound sleeper, you will be okay. Not a sound sleeper. Those diesels uh, can rattle all through the night. I'm a sound sleeper, and I've uh, woke up with nobody left in the lot. All of the trucks uh, pulled out early morning. I just have to tell you one more story about Eisenhower. There's a Canadian connection. When he was president, he arranged to uh, come up to Canada and meet the Prime Minister of Canada in Banff, Alberta. And in honor of that, Canada changed the name of an iconic mountain there, Castle Mountain. 
For miles around, it looked like a castle as people drove along the Bow River in the foreground there on the Trans-Canada Highway west of Banff. Local people were outraged at renaming the mountain to Mount Eisenhower. And to make matters worse, some political thing came up, some major thing, and Eisenhower was not able to make the meeting. The meeting was canceled, but the name had been changed in the meantime. And it took 20 years of continual lobbying to get the name changed back to the original, Castle Mountain. We're uh, rolling out onto the interstate right now. And it's a great way to get across the country. But you may have, uh, have heard me say that if you want to really find out about the communities and places and the people, you have to get off the interstate and uh, go into those uh, communities. Hit the subscribe button. That'll tell you when we're putting more videos out on the internet. Until then, we're rolling. This is I Go Travel with uh, Don Barnett. You can find uh, more travel videos uh, in my channel on YouTube. Uh, if you Google, like it says there in the bottom part, uh, start with the little at sign at Don Barnett 5090. Hit the word playlists in the middle of the page and scroll down. Each playlist contains several travel videos.